Okay, so the uh, project is underway quite nicely. I've now hooked up a display. So I built that display, obviously, as I was showed in the previous part of the video. Um, so that's nice, simple serial interface, three wires, and off you go. And just program the Arduino to deal with it. From this and doing the implementation of the programming and that sort of stuff, I've decided that this board needs redesigning. As it is, it works, obviously. It can be simplified a lot. Because I've decided in the end I don't need to use the op amp, it's just overly complicated. The situation didn't re really need to be necessary, it wasn't required really, so that whole op amp circuitry there is going to go. I'm going to redesign the board. But I'm also, you can see here, I've got a voltage here, current, which is the device under test, and I've got a supply voltage. Now, what it does is it uh, calculates the voltage drop on the shunt resistor and deducts that voltage drop from the supply voltage because it's stuff that's a zero volt reference, right? So if it, um, so if you've got a big voltage drop across that resistor, then what you're actually getting on the, across the device on the test isn't actually the supply voltage. Now, what I'm going to do is actually going to modify this and have three voltage reference points: one for the supply, one for the device on the test, and obviously one for the shunt resistor, so you can determine what the current is. So if I do three voltage measurements then you can actually see the difference between supply then and the actual device on the test. So this is obviously just preliminary. That will be better once I redesign the board. The software can stay the same, apart from telling it which pin to use for the voltage input. Um, right now it's doing it by calculation. That voltage there is the voltage it's measuring at that device on the test. And this one here is compensating for the shunt resistor drop. Okay, So when you've got heavy load on it, that voltage there ends up dropping down below this one. So that's what's actually there and that's what the voltage drop calculation is based on. It is actually working. So there we go and that's charging up. Got that current draw there. And you see the difference in voltage now. Where it's charging that up. So it's allowing for that voltage drop across that resistor. Let's crank the voltage up a bit. You might see that big difference in voltage there until the current comes down. I'm just going to drop this down. I don't, this is a 25 volt cap, so I don't want to go too much with it. So you actually see the voltage dropping down as the capacitor is discharging, right? So that's measuring the voltage across the cap. So this is why I need to refine this design a little bit. And once I get rid of the op amp and stuff, I actually have some extra room on the circuit, and, and I'll be able to do that. But I won't redesign this board until I've got the other testing done for the high voltage stuff to determine what I'm actually going to use. Now, a big variable resistor is probably going to be adequate versus the switch and a resistor array. All right, so we'll see if we can handle it or not. If, if the variable pot can handle it fine, which based on these current readings I think it can, um, I won't need all this resistor bank. So I can actually cut the ball down, make it shorter. Then it only leaves the high voltage generation section at the top here with the multiplier. I may leave that intact even if I don't use it because if other people build this board on and they're using a 110 volt system rather than 240, which is what I'm on, then you need to bring that voltage up more. So you may actually need all those stages in order to do that. So um, I'm probably going to use that and just keep that bit intact, but get rid of that bit there and choose a variable pot, high voltage pot. That seems to be fine. It's working, the display is working, it's monitoring. I'm still sending data via serial, so I've actually got two update rates. I've got one for the display, and I've got a timer, well, not a timer, it's a based on the millis timing on the, in the Arduino. So it checks the millis and it has a specified update time and it adds it onto the millis and it refreshes itself. So each time it reaches that limit, it runs a bit of code to send the serial to the computer and then updates its, its next operation time and then it waits until the time elapses and then it will do again. So it's not actually done a timer, it's actually a refresh time. It's not using a delay. The update rate on this is using a delay. That's that's fine, but um, for sending the serial to the computer, I've, I've done it different ways. There's not two updates, otherwise, this will be waiting for the serial to the, to the computer, and that's done at a different rate. I've got it updating every, I think it's every second or two seconds, something like that. And this is, uh, I think it's 0.3 of a second I've got this set to right now, which seems to be giving a reasonable update rate on this display. If you go too fast, it makes it too hard to read. Um, if you go too slow, it jumps too much. So I think that what I've got there is about right. Oh, too low voltage. Um, it's only because I've got it hacked up to my power supply and it's got sharing supplies. Um, so, anyway. So it does seem to be working all right. At least it works. You know, it's the, the principle was proved proven to be correct. So that's the first stage, is to 
prove it can actually measure the current going in out of, of a capacitor um, well into a capacitor it doesn't measure the out, out current although in theory I probably could if I'm measuring the supply which is what I want to do which is going to be another takeoff point before this resistor I might be able to work out the current flying back out of the capacitor when it's discharging but does that really matter does it no probably not it probably doesn't I'm probably it's probably a feature it doesn't really need but it might be possible to code that in once I've got the other takeoff point for the actual supply. Now this part seems to be good. What I'm going to look at next is doing a high voltage section and um, injecting some high voltage DC and see what happens and see if we go over scale or not because right now the maximum range on this with this 150 ohm resistor is about 34 milliamps right? which isn't much but it seems adequate even on these quite large capacitors. When you're talking big capacitors, you know, big chunky power supply, I think some obvious a test gear, or, you know, this kind of size or bigger, then it may not be enough, I mean that's 35 volt one, but, so it's also an initial inrush current could be an issue, but it's not really that you're worried about, it's the, it's the leakage, so, and that tends to be in a smaller region of the scale, do I allow for the high current or not? I mean, I actually play with the idea of having a re relay on the supply here, because this resistor here, the 10k, it's here. Well, I've kind of got a 1k bridge across to make it a 1k resistor. If I have that switchable, you can have a fast and slow charging rate. So if you got a big cap, you put it on a faster rate, which obviously increases the current going into it. But if you've got a small cap, then you want a bigger resistance to give it more time so you can see what's going on. So I'm, that's what I'm looking at there. So if it's having a, a 10k, it's actually having that variable. So it allows you to adjust what a charging current it could potentially be. So I might look at that, I might use a relay or or um, I may just do mechanical switching with a with a manual panel switch or something. So you know fast and slow rates or something like that. So I'm gonna redesign that section too. Just little tweaks, just things I'm finding, you know, just to help refine the design a little bit and make it a little bit better. Obviously that the inrush current is is an issue. If you've got a big cap it could be substantial. So, but then again, because it's going through resistors, it's going to be charging up rather than a big solid jolt. So it may not be such an issue. This is the biggest one I've got. What's this? 16 volt, 2200. Oh, sorry, 22,000 UF. I could test that. But that's the biggest one I've got right now. I haven't got anything bigger. So let's actually hook this up and see what happens. Let's drop the supply down to 16 volts. And we'll chuck that one in. Something else I do need to add is a way of discharging a capacitor. So if you've got a high voltage cap and you've charged it up and you go take it out of circuit, it's going to have a high voltage on it. What I'm looking at doing is potentially having a switched relay anyway on the supply side and the Arduino will control it or something like that. So you can do like, you push a test button or do a test and then after a certain period of time disconnect it again or you have to hold the button or something like that to allow for a safety of some kind. I think it kind of needs it. Now let's try and do this so you can actually see the screen. So I'm sitting at, this is 15 volts, my supply should be 16. They should be the same. Oh, let's just measure that. Hopefully I don't have an error in my calculations. Everything else has been looking okay. Let's wait for the signal to start up. There you go. Right. Ground point. Let's find a decent ground point. <laughs> There's heaps of them, I should be finding them quite easily. Alright, and let's measure the supply voltage on here. That is 16 volts, so why is it only reading 15? That's weird. Hmm, nice to look at that. Anyway, let's chuck this on and see what happens. Get it so you can see at the same time. So, see the current's not that substantial, and that's the 1k resistor in there. And so you can see the charging right there. So that's you can see that difference in voltage where it's allowing for the voltage drop across the resistor. So that's the device on the test and that's the supply. So um, I will be changing that as I said. So in a way you can do the, the, the curves, you know, the current versus voltage curve or something, but I don't know. Well, you can when I was measuring it on the um signal scope there on the signal multimeter, the um three six five X, because it does that graphing function on there. I actually hooked, had it hooked up the power supply and can actually just graph it out. You could see how it actually responded in voltage. You could curve it. So that's quite nice. Um, so the potential thing with the Arduino as well is that you could potentially add an SD card or something like that to it. And then actually 
log the data if you really wanted to do that. It's not something I play around with. I've, I've never messed with an SD card reader or anything like that, so I really don't know how it's going to go. So there you go, and that's with a 1K, but it's because it's a quite a big value resistor uh, capacitor. So it's quite a long charging rate. But you can see the current isn't that significant, so it's obviously not leaking. Um, but I think I might need to look at those resistor values, and uh, if I increase this, I'm increase the current. All right, let's go. That's 220 ohm right now. All right, so let's increase the current a little bit. So, you know, obviously it's getting a drop through that resistor there, but that's only 150 ohm compared to that. So yeah, it's almost there now. But it's interesting why I'm getting that voltage error. I'm going to have to look into that. It wasn't like that before. Right, so here's the progress on the project. I've got the thing built. I've been playing around with the code and um, it is kind of working so far, at least in this preliminary stage. It's not completed obviously, it's still got quite a bit of work to go, but um, it is actually outputting values and it's responding as I want. So let's just zoom in here. So I left it like this so you could see the, um, the bench set up there. You can see there's the board at the bottom there and all the messy wiring. The fluke on the left is measuring current in milliamps and the siglet on the right is measuring the voltage across the device under test which is exactly the same data being displayed in the serial monitor here for the Arduino okay um, kind of <laughs> um, I'm going to need to set the voltmeter up it's just sitting there right now, it's not actually hooked up so let's just get this okay, here we go, I'm just going to have to hold it alright let's start some testing now. I have a capacitor across it already. I have a 2200 UF 35 volt cap. So it shouldn't go above 35 volts, but we're going to go above 35 volts because we're going to see what happens. Hope it doesn't go bang. So that's on 3 volts now, so let's go up to 20 volts. I've got this, my power supply in series, so you can see what's going on there. You can see the current spiked and the voltage is gradually creeping up to match the set voltage. Okay, and you'll see the same thing in the serial monitor window as well. So, come across here. Let's go up a bit more. Yeah, that's now 40 volts output. So this is beyond the rating of the capacitor. You can see the current still there, creeping down. Right, so that's beyond the, the rating of the cap. So it could be some interesting things going on soon. Now let's go up to 50 volts. And see it's, you can see it charging, you can see the current going in. So this is the information I'm trying to get from a leakage tester. So that part is actually functioning, okay, 60 volts. Again, that's what we're supposed to do. Alright, so what you see on the screen is what is on here. Now within reason, it's not 100% accurate. It's pretty close. There are some slight discrepancies there, but it's only resolution issues really. It's just the resolution you can read it. Oh, my probes come off. Get on there. Okay, so it's slightly out there, but it's not too bad. I did you have it more accurate than this? I've been playing around some stuff and trying different things, and but you lost some of the accuracy on it. Probes coming off again. Okay, so 57.7 is what it's doing. We've got 58.5 there, thereabouts, but it's not, it's only got half volt resolution. Bear in mind, it's an Arduino which is running on 5 volts, it can only have 5 volts going into it, so it's using the voltage dividers and stuff like that. So, yeah, right, so the input is actually going into the Arduino on the voltage measurement. It's 0.58 volts, right, that's all that's going into it at that voltage. Okay, um, and on the current measurement, getting 0.22 volts. Right, that is all the Arduino is actually seeing to give you those readings. So um, obviously I've got some scaling built into the firmware on the Arduino, um, which is allowing it to be uh, compensated for variations and drift and whatever. I spent a while doing firmware for the Arduino, so. Um, but you can see, I'm seeing it at 60 volts and it's sitting at 2 milliamps. 
So the leakage is quite high, their voltage, because it's not actually designed for it. I'll drop the voltage back down, get it around to 30 volts, and you'll see the current's actually flying back out of the capacitor. So that's the actual device under test voltage there, 30.02. And what's it saying? 30 volts. So, um, so that part is all working. So it's not too bad. Now the um, and you can see the current is still showing as a negative because the capacitor is still discharging. It's still a lot of power in there still. Get that down to 20 volts. And you can see it discharging down. So I've actually modified the circuit a couple of times now to make it a bit better. Now there's a 10 kilo ohm resistor in series. I'll get a dummy board I can show you. Show you on this one. So there's that 10k resistor just here, which I've changed. I've now made that a 1k. I put this, I put my little resistance box in parallel with it, and made it a 1k because it was charging way too slowly. So, um, I mean, you may want it slow, but then also having a 10k is a good safety feature because you've got that high voltage here. If it goes to a dead short, it's got a 10k resistor to help dump it. But um, yeah, it's a bit of a risk. But anyway. Um, I've lied that to it speed up the, ch the charging time. So the other thing I've done is that 0.1 ohm resistor, just here. I've now changed it to be a 100 ohm resistor instead, because the voltage I was getting out of it just wasn't high enough. 10,000 UF cap. Now I'll chuck this one on there, and I'll put the voltage up. So I want to stress it. That's the idea. Okay, I want to see the charging current when it goes in. So let's hook it up. Don't forget to watch both these meters. Well. Ignore the voltage, because um, I have to hold it in my hands, just ignore that one for now. Look at this one here, which is the current, and um, watch the screen just there, and you'll see what's going on. When you watch it, that's, doing, that's, the, that's what the Arduino is seeing. Ready? It's in. It's 1.3 volts at that current level. Okay, so you can see this current's gradually coming down. But imagine how slow this would have been with that 10k in there, it's 10 times slower. <laughs> so it's good if you've got a small cap and you're just trying to see what that one's like, but on a large capacitor like this, which is probably what's going to be used for as larger caps really rather than small ones, um, then you need it to be a bit faster. You see the current still coming down, and it closely matches what the fluke is seeing. Alright, so that part is all working. You know, this when you get down to the lower levels there, as we start to get error creeping in. So let's just have a look at what voltage is now. So we're getting lot. 54 millivolts. So, the error is going to be a bit greater than it. But it's like, you know, it's still reading, but it's just slightly out there. Um, I did actually have it all compensated for and tuned in the, in the firmware, but um, it meant when it go, went below a certain voltage level and a certain current, it no longer compensated. It actually it wouldn't go to zero because it's just a, an, I basically put an offset in the firmware, so it had an offset on there, and um, that fixed it and got it all really accurate. And I was having it accurate right across the whole range until you got down to close to zero, and then it was just wouldn't go to zero um, because of the offset. So I ended up uh, scrapping that idea, at least for the current. The voltage can keep it. Um, but there you can see it's inaccurate by quite a bit. This is where the offset was would have been really handy, you know. But you see it's drawing a quarter of an amp. But that's not what the Arduino is saying. So I've still got some tuning to do on this, on that side of things. And just to try and figure out why it's not as accurate as it should be. 
And if I measure the voltage there, this is on the input to the Arduino, um, you can see this is correlating quite well with the current. Um, so this isn't quite right. I mean, the resistor that's in there isn't exactly 100 ohms, 97.7 ohms, which I've programmed into it so uh, it knows what it actually is. So I can work out that relationship. But it seems that the Arduino is giving an offset there, and I'm trying to compensate for that, and that's being a pain. Anyway, it's coming along, it's, it's actually working. Um, the ammeter, the, the fluke, that is hooked up onto those, onto that jump, uh, header pins up on there for the ammeter. So I've just taken the jumper off and connected up to that so I can do that monitoring. So it's the kind of thing you can actually do with that board is to give you those adaptations which you need to tune it. Very handy. Glad I designed that in actually. Would have been a bit of a pain trying to break into the circuit otherwise. Alright, so here's the code so far. Um, still full of comments. Still messy. Um, Sort of things we don't even use. We've got EEPROM, for example, I'm not even using EEPROM, um, at least not at this stage. Had some ideas for things I could do. So here's the code, it's still, it still needs a lot of work yet, but it's not that much of it, you know, it's, just, it's about 150 lines, um, and there's stuff in there which can be taken out. We've got commented out various options and the I was playing around with. So it's not too bad. Pretty concise code, really. Now I've got this big multi-tap transformer here set up, just for isolation. Um, I've actually ordered some more transformers because I've decided to do, run this board off 115 volts. Reason being is that this is a project I want other people to get to build. So I want a nice easy voltage. 115 volts is an easy voltage to get to if you're already in a country which uses that voltage and it's dead easy, you can feed it straight in or maybe use an isolation transformer, so it's 115 to 115, 1 to 1 ratio on the transformer. If you're on a, a country like I am where it's 240 volts or so, um, you can use a step down like I'm doing here. All right, so it did easy, common voltage, so I thought I'd, I chose that voltage here to supply the board. So what that means is I've put multiple multipliers in here. The transformer here is currently shoving in 116 volts AC right now, as you can see. These multipliers here, the first one does basically rectification, the second one does multiplying, but then the third and fourth one also do multiplying. Let's go back to DC, because I'm going to be measuring DC now. I've got these little shields on the probes here, because I don't want them slipping and accidentally shorting things out, because there's high voltages here. I'm only, there's actually, this part of the circuit isn't currently connected up to anything, so ignore these wires, they're not doing anything. So that's the zero volt common there. Right, which is on the AC, one of the AC sides, which makes that zero volts. And if I go to the first test point here, which should be after the first multiplier, so that's 313 volts. So if I probe around here, so that's after the first capacitor and diode, right? So I'm getting 150 volts DC. And after the diode, I'm getting that first double stage, which comes over here, right? And I've just got these other two capacitors here. This capacitor here is the next one. Um, and that's actually a junction of these resistors, uh, these diodes just down here. So it's 467 volts DC. And then it goes through this one with the final diode, which goes to there, which is what I designed. 618 volts DC. Now that's actually higher than I want. I actually want like no more than 500 volts really. So it's not quite what I was targeting. Now this one here, 467, I'm happy with that voltage. Um, I don't really see a need to do 600 volts, but there's still two more doubler stages in here, so you potentially can go up to nearly a thousand volts on this thing. Um, obviously they're not installed right now, but from that stage here, it's plus 150 volts pretty much from each one, isn't it? So it's 106, 120 there, I see 620 there. So that's 100 and yeah, 115 volts here, isn't it? It's about 115, 113 volts between those two stages. The reason I've done this, another reason I've done 115 volt supply, um, is it means it's well within the ratings of these caps. If I was you shoving on 230 volt supply, it's getting close to the, the ratings. 
and also makes it harder to find caps that will work. So if I chose 115 volts, you just use more multiplier stages, but it's easier to get the parts. And it also gives you a bit more flexibility about how you step it up and that sort of stuff as well. Because if you can't get 115 volts, you might be using 100 volts and use an extra stage or whatever, right? Um, anyway, so, but right now this is a higher voltage than I actually want to have. Um, you know, that's one stage too many and that's one stage too few. It's that one I've got over here, which is the one I actually want, that's 470 volts also there. So that's what I need to target is that 470 volts. Um, but unfortunately, I didn't tap off in the right place on the circuitry. I only tapped off after this, after that other stage. So it's a bit higher than I want. Um, now, when I designed this board, I allowed for an adjustment resistor just here. So you've got a series resistor network here, or actually, I'm going to use a pot which goes across there, and then another resistor here. So it acts like a resistor divider. So that might actually allow me to get it down low enough anyway, because you know, I kind of designed that in, but that's going to create a voltage drop, um, which may be problematic later on for doing other things. So I'm not sure what I'll do. I might actually redesign this board. I might take this capacitor out. If I just take that cap out, it will feed that voltage through the diodes directly to that point. So if I just remove that capacitor, it will still work, um, but it will be at the voltage that I want there. So I thought I'd document that, if anyone wants to try and do this, I've got to make it run. It's not good, is it? Electrons fall out, as Dave says. Um, so, but if you want to do 600 volt caps, then this is going to be perfect for you. If you don't want 600 volts, you only want 500 volts, which is what I want, then just leave that capacitor there out. I'm going to redesign this board. Um, with, uh, I'm going to simplify it a little bit. I'm taking out the circuitry; it's not being used. So let's power it down again now. So I just want to document that and and make sure that I don't lose that aspect of this circuitry. And um, this electronics here, this is going to be run from a separate power supply, although it goes to the same board. I was originally thinking about tapping it off of one of the resistors, so. Um, Obviously there's going to be a resistor divider, but I'm thinking well that's going to potentially load down the circuitry. And when it's doing a capacitor test, that might that will load it down as well, which means it might actually lose enough voltage that it kills the electronics. So um, it might drop below the threshold of what the regulator can keep up with. Potentially, um, it's a maybe. You know, it's one of these things, which may or may not happen. Um, so I'm. Planning, I'm just running this, this circuitry off a separate main supply, so it's another 240 volt supply, little transformer, which is going to be like 9 volts AC coming out, which I'll then uh, rectify and shove into the regulator on the main board here, because um, that can handle you know up to 30 volts, 32 volts, and like that's just fine. So 9 volts or so, it's going to be about 12 or something like that, roughly 12 13 volts DC coming in, so that's nice and easy for it off the rectified supply, and it gives a bit of isolation between the two sections as well hopefully um, but yeah this is a, a dangerous project if you stick your finger in the wrong place you will know about it or you may not know about it because you'll be dead but um, yeah it's it's best I do the development stuff and figure out how to work <laughs> than having someone that doesn't really get it so much um, doing it because I don't want anyone killing themselves trying to make this thing actually I might even be able to move the capacitor to a different place and put the other diodes in, so I'm actually skipping a stage. That might be possible. So then I can actually get that. Mm, yeah, but I think it could do actually. But I'm not going to worry about that. 500 volts or so DC is plenty. I only really want like 450. Um, I've allowed up to 500 as the top end. Get you later.